This is Tom Fox. Welcome to the 2022 update to Trekking Through Compliance. Today we take up Episode 2, Charlie X. Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of Trekking Through Compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Episode 2, Charlie X, Stardate 1533.6. The Enterprise crew takes charge of Charlie Evans from the science probe vessel Antares in order to transport him to the nearest, to his nearest living relatives on Earth Colony Alpha 5. Captain Raymart and Navigator Nellis sing the praises of Charlie, the sole survivor of a transport crash on the planet Thesis some 14 years ago. Charlie appears to be quite bright and has learned to talk from the crashed ship's data tapes. Before dropping Charlie off, Remart and his crew bid the Enterprise what appears to be an unusually hastened adieu and return to their ship. On the Enterprise, Charlie tells McCoy that the crew of the science ship didn't like him and he wants people to like him. Charlie then proceeds to fall in love with Yeoman Janice Rand and he pats her on her rump, which she objects to, and gives her a bottle of perfume. Charlie meets Rand later in the rec room where Spock is playing a Vulcan musical instrument and Uhura is attempting to sing. Charlie shows good taste by not enjoying the singing and causes Uhura to run out of breath. When the Antares is almost out of communication range, it starts to warn the Enterprise about something, then disintegrates. After the spontaneous destruction of the Antares, Charlie makes the curious and sinister-sounding comment, it wasn't very well constructed. Shortly thereafter, another strange event takes place when the cook reports that the synthetic meatloaf has been transformed into real turkeys. Back in the rec room, Kirk manages to beat Spock at 3D chess, implausibly beating Spock's logic with his own quirky strategy. Charlie is intrigued by the game and tries to duplicate the feat. After losing, he causes the white pieces to melt, revealing that he has both a bad temper and some very scary telekinetic powers. Yeoman Rand introduces Charlie to Yeoman third class Tina Lawton, but Charlie is only interested in Rand and brushes off Yeoman Lawton. Kirk, still doing his best to instill Charlie with manly qualities, attempts to teach him how to fight using some curious mallet objects. When Kirk's training partner Sam laughs at one of Charlie's falls, Charlie makes him go away. This demonstrates to Kirk and Spock that Charlie has the power to manipulate matter. Kirk calls security guards to escort Charlie to his quarters, but Charlie objects and causes all phasers on the ship to vanish. Kirk suspects that Charlie has been given certain powers which legends describe to an ancient race of Thesians and confronts Charlie. Charlie admits he destroyed the Antares by making a warped baffle plate on the shield of the energy piling go away, but claims it would have blown up anyway. When Charlie discovers that Kirk plans to divert the route from Alpha 5, he takes control of the Enterprise and its crew. He forces Mr. Spock to recite poetry then turns Tina into a lizard and bursts in on Yeoman Ran. He spurns his advance, she spurns his advances, and he makes her disappear. Kirk and Spock attempt to lock Charlie in a detention chamber, but to no avail. Charlie goes on a rampage, turning a young crew member into an old woman and removing the faces of some crew members who are laughing. Kirk, Bones, and Spock try to distract Charlie by overloading him with activity, but do not meet with success until a Thesian vessel approaches the Enterprise. The Thesians return Yeoman Ran, apologize to Charlie, or rather apologize to Kirk, and take Charlie away to live alone with them. This episode is troubling in many ways. I am recording this after the recent massacre at a Uvalde elementary school in Texas. And I think that Charlie is a precursor to what, unfortunately, we have seen uh, many people do who are either um, spoiled rotten with no moral compass, uh, feel like 
they're at the end of their rope and have nothing left to give or just ready to end it all in a blaze of glory. I don't know what, if any, of those might have been the motivation of the Valdi shooter. Nevertheless, the massacre of 19 uh, children under the age of 10 is certainly um, something that should give us all pause. But it also brings up perhaps another uh, issue, which is what do you do around mental health? The governor of the state of Texas blames the massacre on the mental health of the shooter uh, and says that more mental health is needed. All the while, he has slashed the budget of the Texas Department of Mental Health in 2022 alone by over $200 million. Texas ranks last in mental health spending of any country or uh, state, rather, in the United States. So it's difficult to see how the state of Texas plans to deliver mental health when the budgets have already been cut to the bone. But as a chief compliance officer, how are you going to uh, not only monitor the mental health of your employees, but also deliver appropriate mental health services? Almost every major company has these available, so I know they are available, but you have to get people to those resources. You have to let them know those resources are available. You have to let them know that their careers are not going to be uh, damaged or not, they are not going to be re- retaliated against in any way if they use the mental health resources that are available. So it's a very difficult and indeed troubling question. I think Charlie X really hits upon uh, these issues in a topical way that lent itself to this 2022 update to trekking through compliance. There are, however, some compliance takeaways from this episode that I would like to consider in addition to the mental health issues that I just uh, discussed. Number one, uh, if you ask more from your frontline employees in terms of compliance, they will typically respond positively because of the engagement. Karsten Tams has uh, taught us that engagement is a key component of any best practices compliance program through his work on design thinking and compliance. Well, the same concepts is true around engagement. If you engage with your frontline employees, typically they will respond positively. Uh, Number two, compliance is like a multidimensional chess match. I always enjoy Star Trek, the original series episodes where they play a three-dimensional chess game, and that's what compliance is. Certainly from the legal perspective, you've got United States law, You'll typically have the state law where you're incorporated. You'll typically have a law of the country where you're doing business. And then you'll have internal company law, policies and procedures. And compliance can be a hugely interesting intellectual challenge for the legally minded among you out there or for those who just like uh, working through multidimensionals, both on a vertical and horizontal plane. And number three, finally, um, uh, as a compliance professional, who are you mentoring? Here I'd point you to Lisa Fine and Mary Shirley, uh, co-founders of Great Women in Compliance, or the Gwick Girls, as they are known. Um, What they have created in terms of mentorship for the compliance community is really unparalleled. And if you're a great woman in compliance, I would urge you to talk to them about being involved in their group. But you as a compliance officer, I would challenge you to mentor a younger compliance professional. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion of Charlie X, and I hope you will join us tomorrow for our next episode of Muds Women. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.